name is Jo Jean and I'm a nutrition scientist at the British Nutrition Foundation. In this podcast, we will be looking at the major non-white minority ethnic groups in the UK, their health profiles, traditional diets and some factors which may affect their food choices. To begin with, we need to be clear on what is meant by ethnicity. There are varying definitions for the terms ethnic groups and ethnicity. In short, ethnicity is a self-perceived identity and belonging to any ethnic group is subjective to the individual. The UK has a rich mix of cultures and culturally diverse communities. Some reflect a long-established history and heritage, but some are related to more recent changes in society and economics. According to the last census, the largest non-white minority ethnic groups in the UK were South Asians, Black African Caribbeans and the Chinese. Looking at the research, studies have shown that some minority ethnic groups are more likely to experience poorer health outcomes compared with the mainstream population. Earlier, I spoke to dietitian Asmina Govinji to explain a little bit more. Hi Asmina, thanks for your time today. Are there any common health problems experienced by South Asians, Black African Caribbeans and the Chinese? Yes, as with the mainstream population, these groups are at a higher risk conditions such as cardiovascular disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes and obesity. And what we're noticing is that, for example, in conditions such as type 2 diabetes, people from these groups are, are getting that at a much younger age, say around 25, compared to the white population who tend to get type 2 diabetes at around the age of 40. Now we don't know why this is, it could be due to genetic factors, it could be due to lifestyle, it could even be due to the fact that there tend to be lower birth weights amongst these groups. What about the micronutrient status of these groups? Iron deficiency anemia is common amongst minority ethnic groups, especially amongst women. We're also observing vitamin D deficiency within these groups, particularly in the winter months. Now this could be due to the darker skin or the fact that more of the skin is covered up with clothing which reduces vitamin D production. What about their physical activity levels? Levels of physical activity tend to be lower than the general population and there could be social or cultural reasons why this is so and some may not actually recognise that physical activity is a priority if you want to look after your health. Are there different types of measurements when assessing the health of minority ethnic groups? It's been suggested that the obesity cutoff points that define overweight and obesity should be lower for people from Asian groups. Now it's important to note that by Asian groups we mean those that are South Asian and the Chinese. So if for example you were to take two people, the one from the Asian group would have a higher body fat content compared to the one from the white population even although they have the same body mass index. In order for us to be accurate we need to take into account these ethnic differences if we're going to have good risk assessment tools. Unfortunately, there is a lack of national data on the health and nutritional status of these minority ethnic groups across the UK. And it's really important that we aim to fill this gap so that we can reduce any health inequalities. Thank you so much for your time, Asmina. After learning more about the health and nutrient status of these groups, let's now have a closer look at their traditional diets, as well as some of the factors which may influence food choices. The traditional dietary habits of minority ethnic groups vary widely. The traditional South Asian diet consists of staples such as rice and bread, eaten with vegetables, beans and pulses, meat or seafood in a curry. It also features a wide range of herbs and spices for flavouring. The foods commonly eaten also vary by season and between those from different regions and religious groups. The traditional African Caribbean diet includes a range of starchy foods including rice, plantain, cassava, fufu, yam and potatoes. Various vegetables are also consumed with meat or fish dishes as well as different tropical fruits. Commonly eaten snacks include beef patties, salt fish fritters and fried dumplings. Wheat products such as noodles or buns are commonly consumed as staples in northern China, while rice is typical for southern China. Chinese dishes are often packed with lots of green leafy vegetables and mushrooms. It also features soy milk and other soy products such as bean curd. A variety of fruits are also consumed. 
there are marked differences between the types of foods consumed and cooking styles across China. Special foods are eaten at different times of the year. Traditional diets may change because of acculturation. This means that habits may be assimilated to that of the host country. This has been associated with a less healthy diet that is higher in energy, fat and salt and lower in fruit and vegetables, which may have an impact on the health of the younger generation. Having a better understanding of the various factors accounting for the different food choices can make us more aware of the needs of minority ethnic groups and help them make healthier choices. So, what are these factors? The amount of money I have affects the food I buy. The amount of disposable income available for families and individuals to spend on food impacts on their dietary habits and the foods they choose to eat. However, this does not mean that they are limited to unhealthy foods. Fruits and vegetables which are in season are often cheaper and they can also go for some cheaper cuts of meat. When I can, I, I do I do buy traditional food. It all depends on the price as well, of course, yeah. While some traditional foods are available in mainstream supermarkets, the more traditional ones are only available in ethnic-style supermarkets located in specific regions of the UK, for example, London or Manchester. In addition, because of seasonal variation, some foods may not be available in the UK during certain times of the year. Um, I know that um, there are healthy eating messages, but how do these apply to me? The Eat Well Plate, the UK's food selection guide, which sets out the types and proportions of food which make up a healthy, balanced diet, is suitable for everyone over two years of age, no matter what ethnic group they belong to. According to my religion, I cannot eat certain things. Some ethnic and religious groups are closely related, and the dietary habits of some minority ethnic groups are influenced by religious beliefs. Depending on the religion, there are rules as to how, when and with what particular foods are eaten. For example, Hindus do not eat beef because the cow is held in high regard and a symbol of abundance. Strict Hindus are vegetarians because they believe in reincarnation, so the soul of an ancestor may be in an animal. Some foods are completely prohibited, while others may be eaten occasionally or in small amounts. Certain groups may also practice fasting on special days. Dietary practices may also differ depending on the degree of devotion. We have different uh, beliefs uh, such as hot and cold foods. Some minority ethnic groups may hold traditional beliefs about food and health and views on body image that may conflict with current health advice. For example, the belief of fat children as healthy. This may be because overweight and obesity are associated with affluence and success in some non-Western countries. Chinese communities also consider the balance of yin and yang of the body as particularly important. After a very busy day, I find that I do not have the time to spend preparing traditional foods. I'd rather have it prepared for me rather quickly so that I can spend more time with my leisure activities, which would be tai chi, short night bows or swimming. Lack of time to prepare food or lack of confidence in traditional cooking skills may also encourage less traditional styles of cooking. My children prefer to eat other food more than uh, uh, traditional food. Older generations are more likely to follow traditional diets and less likely to change their dietary habits compared with younger generations. Younger generations are more likely to adopt the dietary habits of the mainstream population. People's food choices are affected by a wide range of factors. The UK has a rich combination of different cultures and culturally diverse communities. It is very important to understand more about the different minority ethnic groups by addressing language and communication issues as well as cultural differences to ensure better access to healthcare services as well as health and nutrition intervention. The, the language and the um, social uh, uh, and cultural eating habits are uh, uh, main factors that actually determine uh, a person's uh, eating habits. So in some ways as a community organization, we have to introduce a, a better way of understanding the best way to eat food properly and healthily. Thank you for watching. For more information in this area, you can obtain a copy of our briefing paper or view our video podcast on ethnic foods. For more nutrition information, visit our website nutrition.org.uk or foodafactoflife.org.uk.
Bye for now.